Dreams along with it. Here come the Hundo Burgers. It's on the menu tonight. Toon won the 1v1. Toon won the entire game. There we go. Six seconds left. Game and Gladiators are your May Finals champions. After a devastating loss in the Grand Finals of the AOS Cup and placing second, I made a recap video where I said how important it was I made this video, not only for the fans, but for myself to reflect on. I even commented on my own video promising the next title would be how I won the May Finals. So why don't I take you on that journey now? Go. Let's go. This is how I won the May Finals. Like any good tournament story, our journey starts well before the day of the event. Let me take you to right after the AOS Cup. Many of the teams that participated in the event ended up disbanding or reforming their roster. Looking back at the teams we played in the AOS Cup, Team TOS, our first matchup in that event, was unable to qualify through the open qualifiers. Team Born Famous released their support player box that could form their own team with members of the community like Red Love and LKJ. Team Blossom completely disbanded after their loss to us in the Chaos Cup, with some of their members joining IX. IX also brought on It's Nudo, a talented ladder player who mains Aptal, but until joining IX, didn't find much competitive success. Combined with OG, who's seen as one of the most talented top laners in the game, IX was one of the teams to beat. Backhand ended up forming their own super team with Elo, who also departed from Blossom, and Jungle Book, who was previously on the team, but retired to go back to school. Which left Nemesis and Full Send as the only teams we played in the last tournament, keeping their roster unchanged. Understanding these roster changes was important in our preparation of the event. We needed to know what each team was capable of playing and have plans ready for anything out of the ordinary. The last thing we wanted was to find ourselves in a bracket reset in the grand finals on the brink of placing second versus a strategy we weren't ready for. It doesn't end there. Knowing the makeup of the rosters is only half the battle. We also needed to have a good grasp on the metagame, as well as what we wanted to bring out during the event. For this event, the game itself had not been patched since the AOS Finals, so it's likely we would be facing the flip pump that dominated both Europe and North America, team composition which we ultimately fell to in the Grand Finals. But also we'd be facing all sorts of strategies with new developments and findings happening over the few weeks leading to this event. Just to give you a basic tier list of the meta at this point, you'd expect to see Blissey and Hoopa as S tier staples on every team. Blissey, because of its bulk, last hitting in lane, access to Safeguard and its Unite Move Bliss assistance, which keeps single targets alive, and Egg Bomb, which provides crowd control, but more importantly, one of the few moves that counters the other staple in the meta, Hoopa. Now, Hoopa, ever since the last major patch, has been running Hyper Space Hole which after a short delay sends all allies on top of the circle back to home base, resetting them and giving them a full health bar. This can be prevented by any move said knockup, aka Egg Bomb. Koopa's strength isn't just with Hyperspace Hole, but primarily around its Unite move, Rings Unbound, which opens up a portal at Hoopa's location, allowing the entire ally team to instantly teleport regardless of where they are on the map. The next tier would feature Lucario, a Pokemon we've seen practically dominate the meta since the start of the game, and despite being nerfed countless times, is still very prevalent in the meta. And the tier below this would feature essentially every other Pokemon in the game. Surely, some of them are much better than others and may deserve their own tier, but in general, many of these Pokemon have their own niche and a reason to exist in a meta team composition. Knowing all of this, our team's breakdown, and for the most part, other teams, would look something like this. Dugrug on Blissey, myself Indy on Hoopa, Lutano on Lucario, almost every game, and Goof and Toon picking whatever they felt most comfortable playing themselves, 
and versus our opponents. This brings us into the day of the tournament. Round one, we're up against Trevenantix. This is a team featuring familiar names and a team that made a run through the open qualifiers to get here. Luckily, I was able to catch their qualifying games live, so I had an idea of what they were going to bring. And funny enough, we were up against the almighty flip comp. Last choice, Sylveon Lucario. The same strategy that sent us home in the AOS Cup Finals. Of course, we expected many teams to try this against us, considering we didn't have a great record into it. But we were much better prepared this time. Learning from our losses in the previous event, we made sure not to fall behind in the early game, to dominate the lanes, and to force fights before they even had a chance to start their flip. We had our core with Blessy Hoopa and a Lucario on the top side, and comfort picks for Toon on Greninja and Goof on Pikachu. We did what we set out to do, win lanes, take advantage of their weak laners that have their resources dedicated to the flip, and dominate the game before it gets into the final stretch. Easy 2-0, we get zapped both games, but our leads are strong enough that we'd have been fine without it. This brings us into round two versus Sandra's Cheeky Children. This is a team we haven't seen much of in our tournament runs, but they're always creeping around. This team's signature and the team's namesake gives it away that they love to play great in. It's Sandra Cheek's main, and it's what they've used to bring themselves to this point in the tournament. Again, we feel confident in our gameplay and the practice we've had going into this event. We don't make any major changes. And despite even losing Zapdos in one of the games, we had a good enough EXP and point lead. We're able to nullify the Zap with some timely takedowns and another 2-0 leading us in to round three. Now, this is the part of the event where things started to get a bit tough. Up against IX Gaming, which, as I mentioned earlier, took talented players from the community to form a powerhouse. One thing we definitely had to prepare for was its Nudo on the unconventional Absol pick. While most people expect Absol to be run in the central area, Nudo likes to play it as the bottom lane attacker, finding his levels and attack weight stats off the bottom side Audinos. While we did prep for the Absol our first game, went to a rocky start. We come out strong leading up to the first Shredna of the game, but end up just barely losing it, which snowballs into us losing a lot of pressure on the map, and combined with some unfortunate mistakes, we find ourselves desperately behind in points going into the final stretch. Now, one of the things I like to believe my team does best is even in game states where our map is completely opened up, we're really good at finding farm, keeping on the EXP, and taking team fights down resources. We find a timely takedown on Absol, which due to his lead, keeps him knocked down for over 25 seconds in the final stretch. We use that as an opportunity to start a fight, and amazing, we get the zap. Surely we can just score and we've won this game, right? Nope. Because of the large deficit we had and some takedowns IX gets shortly after we win zap, we find ourselves still really struggling at the one minute mark, which means we're behind by at least 100 points, if not more. Thinking that we've probably lost the game, we decide to give the last minute all we've got and go charging down the bottom lane. We needed to do the impossible, but a game is never over until it's over. Yep. Bring a portal to the right of their point. Maybe? Wait, one more kill. They're all gonna be dead. Oh. Stand on the point for Zug. Anyone on the point? I get, I'll get it. Let's go. It went in. It counted, it counted, it said, it said 72, it said 72. It said on my screen. It said on my screen. I think we won by like 150. Holy sh! Let's rewind a bit and just see what happens here. Make all this happen. 
We get those timely knockouts. Lutano goes to score some small amount of money again. And that Lucario that ran away decides to use their jump pad to try to stop these caps from going in. But he's just a little bit too late. That puts him out of position, vulnerable to our cores. Thugrug recognizes that opportunity, immediately sprints to their home cap. And because he's got a score shield on, he's able to go for a score here. The score starts right after the Hoopa casts a Shadow Ball. So the Shadow Ball damage won't be applied onto the score shield. And at the very last second, Lutana steps onto the point, speeding up Zug's score just by a little bit. And that's 72. On the buzzer, fractions of a second would have meant the difference. If anything else had gone wrong in those last few seconds, we wouldn't have gotten that score to go in. In Zagreb's final cap, the small caps that we got throughout the game, the overdunks that we got on their points, it all ended up making the difference. Wow. Even just watching it back now, it's unbelievable. But a win is a win, and we needed the momentum going into game two. We keep our core of Blissey, Hoopa, Lucario. But Goof and Toon say they'd feel much more comfortable rocking a Blastoise and Cameron, respectively. And we're able to execute on it perfectly. Toon uses the Cramrant early game to put pressure on the Lucario he ganks top, and Goof leverages the fact that they have a weak early lane with the Absol to scale easily into the mid to late game. We use that lead to secure the first Shred fight. Unfortunately, we lose the Dread to an enemy Hoopa sniping it, and if it wasn't for that, this game would have been even easier. We continue our lead going into the final stretch, and we find ourselves 5 versus 3 at Zap with a Lucario, Aegislash, Blastoise, and Blissey Unite move on our team, ready to secure Zap. We get Zap, we score, and we get by with a 2 0, putting us in the winner's bracket finals. At this point in the previous event, the AOS Cup, we'd be up against Nemesis, now a Philly on Esports. However, this time around, they'd been knocked down to the lower bracket by IX and eliminated by Foreign Famous. Full Send, the other team we had played in the AOS Cup, was knocked down by Blackhand, the team we were set to play in the winner's bracket finals of this event. Blackhand, as I mentioned earlier, was a team to look out for. Already an amazing team, they brought back their star player, previously retired jungler, Jungle Book, and Elo, one of the core players of Blossom, forming a super team. So this was a team we were preparing for both in incompositional changes, in terms of what Pokemon we wanted to pick, where we were going to lane them, but also our early game rotations. Now, all of that was thrown out the window when their top laner Overlord had to attend prom and the team would subsequently forfeit. This lunged us into the grand finals, and with IX taking down the lower bracket and getting their win versus Black Hand's forfeit, we were matched up once again in the grand finals. Just like the AOS Cup, we had the advantage of a bracket reset, meaning because we advanced from the winner's bracket, we had the liberty to lose the first best of three set and play in another best of three to win if needed. Considering we had just beaten them 2-0, we loaded into the set with confidence. Toon wanted to keep things fresh, so he elected to go with Cinderace. Goof felt confident on his Pikachu, which he'd been rocking all tournament. And me, Thug, and Lutano held it down on our meta Hoopa, let's see, Lucario picks. Game 1 was shaping up to be exactly what we'd want from our picks. The map was in our favor, we had a solid EXP lead, and we were approaching the end game. We find ourselves on the top side of the map contesting a Rotom, where we lose a Rotom with trade knockouts 2 to 3. Normally, this would be fine, but since it's so close to Zap spawning and our death timers being longer since we were ahead, our main carry Cinderace is knocked out for the first few seconds of the Zap fight. And this is all our opponents needed to get the jump on Zap for a favorable flip and they win the Zapdos, ultimately winning game 1. Unfazed by our loss, we go into game two. And despite not requiring a change in our picks, we elect to play Cram Blastoise on Toon and Goof respectively. It's what we used to dominate game two of the previous set and well within our comfort zone to play. And the picks did what they did for us earlier. We completely dominate the map, winning the early objectives and ultimately dominating the first eight minutes of the game. We get into Zap and with exactly what we'd want. A huge point lead, a huge EXP lead, 
and one of the enemies already knocked out. Surely, we should just hit the zap, force them to fight us, and use our large lead to win the fight, win zap, and move to game 3. Well, that's not exactly what happens. In our efforts to bring them into the fight and fighting them near zap, zap ends up taking so much collateral damage that the game still ends up being a flip on which team can get the last hit. And unfortunately, we lose this coin flip and that game too. We could have won this game, and we should have, but kudos to our opponents for sticking through it and finding the opportunity to win after we made some mistakes. Well, where are we now? On the back of losing our first set in the grand finals, and on the brink of elimination, we're the best of three to win. And if we don't, end up going home second place just like last time. Keying in on the emotions and the mindset we acquired from the last event, we compose ourselves. Right, last time I played tree against these guys, they gave up on asshole, right? You should be the tree, sure. I was mean? actually f***ing eating them alive on tree last time. And the meta hasn't changed. Okay, f*** it, let's go. We have one game. Play whatever the f*** we want, let's go. You know, if we lose... Then we're not out, so I'm down to play something really different if we, if we want to. Tano wants to play the tree, aka Trevenant, believing he can completely counter their comp with it. And despite not really needing a change, considering we were winning most of the last two games, me and the team have faith in our top laner and trust his judgment. Everyone on the team steps up, and individually, we all rise to the occasion. We start the game off with a strategy that I noticed a Japanese team run months ago, where their jungler takes one buff, the blue buff on the green side, since it's a buff closer to the top side of the map, and the side the Lillipup goes towards. This strategy was later adapted by Random Gaming when they had their success with the flip comp and Sylveon running it. And now our team here with Aegislash should give fast pressure into the top lane, and the ability for our bottom laner to get some extra farm with the bottom red buff. Split jungle? Who could have predicted that? Well, this leads to an early game we dominate, giving us access to the first red knock, and despite losing the second one, we get several knockouts, which keeps us ahead in XP all game. We get towards the last few minutes of the game, and I'm able to get a good three-man reset, which keeps us mostly healthy to start the fight. And despite taking a few knockouts on our side, I stay alive on the Hoopa to bring my team back with my Unite. They've exhausted their Aegislash Unite already and need to use their Lucario Unite to take me down. Both Unite moves that are integral to last hitting Zapdos. With all of that down and our respawning Pokemon, we're able to take them down and the Zapdos for a game one win. The tree feels good and Lutano's loving it. We run it back with the same five, anticipating them to have the same five. We opt not to use our one buff strategy since we're on the other side of the map and don't feel like we even need it. Much of the same dominance continues throughout this game. And while we don't have as decisive of a lead, we leverage our Sword Tree Venusaur comp to scale well into the late game. The Zapdos fight goes our way, and with the EXP lead we develop, it comes down to two Outlast hitting their jungler on the zap for the win. 2-0 in the grand finals, and that's it. We've won. But what's wrong? I won the May finals, like I promised. My team's back on top of North America with the most championship points. Job's not finished. Job finished? I don't think so. Okay. Well, the job's not done. Despite being rank 1 in points, we're not guaranteed a spot at Worlds, the championship that will really cement us as the best Pokemon Unite players in the world. To get there, we need to place top 2 in the upcoming regional finals. While this served as good practice for the next event and the number 1 seed, we need to focus up for the main event. And I won't settle for anything but another first place. That's all. And thanks for watching.